super excited to have Babson College admissions team to be on the corridor community this evening. And joining me is Terence Gresham from Babson College, the chief diversity officer and of the admissions team of the program, and also a 2022 MBA grad of the program, Apias Apias Nyuwani. I hope I pronounced that well. So we're going to be starting the call pretty soon. I uh, just want to confirm if Apia is on the call already <laughs> before we hit the road. I was uh, I was actually just talking to him on the phone. He um had, was having trouble signing in, and mm -hmm. he had, he had to re log in and had forgotten his mm -hmm. path, and so he was trying to oh kind of his credentials and get everything going. So he's trying a new um address. So um if in the interest of time, if um if we need to get started. Mm -hmm. and, and once he gets in, he can catch up. The content I have up at, at the beginning is kind of just general maps and information. Okay. okay. Awesome. To share. And then hopefully as we get into the, the heart of the presentation, mm -hmm. he'll be in and then we can have the conversation from there. Fine. And that, that works fine for us. So we're just going to jump right in. And when it comes in, we can introduce him. But for the sake of those who are just joining us for the first time, um, this is City of Lane. Lane is Light Africa Network, and we've been in existence for over three years. And our goal is really to build a more economically and inclusive Africa by providing opportunities for African professionals to advance their career and be change makers in whatever position or organization and country where we find ourselves. The goal of this program is really a series of part of our services in the city of Lane. And part of our services is we do a program called MBA for Africa. And the MBA for Africa usually runs this fall period. And we invite schools from our cross global MBA program, North America and Europe and Africa to come talk to our audience. And for this year, you should expect about 15 schools we're going to be coming every weekend from now through to November to speak to members of our community. And today we have Babson College. So in that light, uh, over the years, we've been able to bring in schools for top MBA program, ranging from Vanderbilt to University of Georgia to NYU to, you know, we have Babson today. We have Oli in Arizona State, Penn State, Virginia, Darden, Texas, Mark Holmes, Penn State, and some other great programs in that aspect. And our community, we have over 700 active um, participants in our community, ranging from prospective applicants to first years in MBA programs, second years, and alums of MBA programs in our community who every day put in the efforts to foster our mission and vision. And today, uh, in the next one hour or one and a half, 30 minutes, hopefully, we are going to be hearing from Babson College. I'm super excited about this you know, relationship. It's the first time we are having Babson College. And I know it's a great program. I know when I was applying to MBA programs, I saw the program, even though I didn't get to apply, but I'm very excited to have the school and some of my colleagues in your program. So we have on the call right now, Terence with us. We're also expecting Apiers, who is also an MBA alum of the program, to join in shortly. But Terence is a senior associate's director for the diversity and inclusion office of the grad admissions for the Babson College. And this afternoon is gonna be working us through to the program to understand what Babson College is all about, what it offer, what makes the program standard and why, how you can apply to this program and get the best of the benefits um, on the program. So Therence, you have the floor. Wonderful. Thank you very much uh, for that wonderful introduction. And I can't thank you enough. I'm, I'm so excited to be able to meet you, to be able to, to learn more about your some. backgrounds and how Babson can help you uh, be successful in your MBA journey. And then, of course, to talk about Babson College and some of our strengths and what makes us such an amazing place to, to be a part of. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And in the meantime, I'll introduce myself. Again, Terrence Gresham. Uh, Senior Associate Director for um, Diversity and Inclusion in the Graduate Admissions Office at Babson. And also joining me today is, is Happy Ears. I'm Happy Ears. I'm going to let you go ahead and introduce yourself as well. Hi. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Um, yeah. My name is Happy Ears. I am originally from Zimbabwe. Uh, I just completed uh, my MBA uh, at Babson College. 
and and by just completed like literally just finished it like what last week or something yeah i finished last week <laughs> <laughs> i finished last week yeah classes in the summer and so he is is really literally just a uh and now officially an alum of Babson. So we're very excited to be able to, to talk about Babson and obviously to um, have happy years insight into not only the process, but also his experience as a student. And we're also curious to see what uh, the next steps will be for him now as an alum. Um, so just wanted to get into a couple of things as it relates to Babson. Um, just a couple of, of quick highlights. For those of you who are kind of interested and curious about numbers and rankings and things of that nature. Um, we do have a number of, of top rankings. The most uh, well-known one is our experience in entrepreneurship. We've been ranked number one in entrepreneurial education by US News and World Report for the past 29 consecutive years. And so for a lot of people who are considering pursuing entrepreneurship as a, a passion of theirs, Babson typically comes up as one of those top places. And as you can see in a number of the other rankings that are listed on the right side, um, we're, we're ranked you know, not only for the entrepreneurship side, but also for uh, those who are um, looking at kind of the international perspective, as well as alumni who started their own businesses. So that being said, you don't have to want to be an entrepreneur. You also may consider entrepreneurship, but you don't have to begin your entrepreneurial journey immediately after you finish the program, no matter where you are in your professional journey, there is a space for you at Babson. And so I think we're gonna spend some time today kind of talking about that. And again, giving you the perspective on certainly how entrepreneurial education can help you to advance your career, whether that's within your particular industry, whether you're thinking about changing to a new industry, or again, if you are thinking about maybe pursuing your entrepreneurial journey, I think there are ways uh, for Babson to be able to be a great place for you to be successful in that space. Um, what I wanted to do right now is just kind of break down our MBA program. And I know this is probably a lot to, to look at um, out of the gate. So we have two different MBA tracks, if you will. Um, we have a one-year MBA program, and then we also have the two-year MBA. So um, really, they're essentially the same program. It's the same courses. It's the same opportunities to get engaged. It's the same electives. The differences between the two programs are uh, the timeline, first and foremost. Um, the two-year MBA is a traditional MBA focus. It starts, actually, uh, the orientation starts next week. So um, it starts pretty much the same timing as most traditional MBA programs that you may be considering. Um, of course, your fall and your spring semester of your first year is spent between your uh, core classes and beginning to get into electives and getting your consulting experience and, of course, getting involved in other opportunities to uh, connect professionally as well as with organizations on campus. Um, the summer is where there's a little bit of a unique opportunity. Of course, you can pursue your internship or uh, for some people, they may be looking at beginning an entrepreneurial venture and they may take some time to uh, take advantage of that summer to be able to uh, go about finding some opportunities in the entrepreneurial space. Um, there are also, for some uh, students, the opportunity to continue to take MBA electives and use that uh, opportunity to kind of accelerate um, the finish of their program. And then in the two-year side, they come back in the fall and in the spring of that second year, and they're usually finished uh, by May of the second year. The one-year program actually starts in May of the first year, and it's a bit of a, an accelerated pace where you'll essentially take pretty much all of your core classes and begin to take um, a few of your electives in the first uh, semester, which is in the summer. Um, then the fall and in the spring is where you're taking uh, your electives. So the timing of it again, where you start in May for the one year versus the uh, two years starting in August, early September, um, and then not having that summer to, to pursue an internship at the one year is essentially the difference between the two. Um, let me get happy years uh, in here real quick. I know that you um, have engaged and, and, and obviously you did um, the, uh, now I'm trying to remember, did, 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 you signed up for the one year initially, if I'm not mistaken, and yes. then just time a little bit. So, <laughs> but obviously you had uh, engagement with both one year and two year 
MBA students. So I wanted to get your perspective on what that was like and how you're able to be involved in the community. Okay, it's fine. Uh, thank you, Terrence. Uh, so while well, it's the one year MBA starts in May, uh, I had visa delays, um, which is something some of you might experience. Um, it just like happens depending on how like the US embassy is able to clear those uh, visa applications as they come through. So instead of starting in May, um, Babson actually advised me to start in August uh, with other two year MBAs because uh, the program is the same, like uh, Terence has already said, uh, the electives are the same, the professors are the same. What differs is that you have to pick up like five electives, like five courses each and every semester for you to be able to be done within that one year period. And uh, for the two year MBA, they do uh, like three, uh, three courses uh, and it's spread out uh, within the two year uh, program. So yes, I had the opportunity to, in the, uh, to mingle actually to learn with the two year MBAs for the very first uh, semester. And it was really like, uh, well, uh, <laughs> I don't have like many good words to, like uh, to describe it. It was like, excellent. It was, <laughs> I mean, right out of adjectives, but <laughs> yeah, I, I had an opportunity to network with a lot of people on the two year MBAs, but I also had the opportunity to mix and mingle and do electives with the one year MBAs that originally I was intended to start with. And then there were also the cohort of retaining uh, two year MBAs that were now in their second year uh, who were out on internship and I had the opportunity to again uh, take some elective courses with those. So you, I ended up like uh, having the opportunity to like network, build connections with like three streams of MB, uh, Bob's on MBAs. So it was really like great for me. Wonderful, thank you. Um, the other thing that I wanted to highlight today is obviously there's gonna be an academic component. Of course, for many of you, the opportunity to, to learn the foundations that the MBA will help you to, um, to gain advance your career is there. But there are so many different ways for you to get involved and lots of opportunities to be a part of the Babson community as a whole outside of the classroom. And so I just wanted to highlight some of the, uh, the centers and institutes that we have on campus and um, a few of which just to really quick um, highlight. Um, first of all, on the very left, Sewell, the Center for Women's Entrepreneurial Leadership. Babson was one of the first schools that actually developed a center that was devoted to women's entrepreneurial leadership. And so they've done some tremendous programming and have had a number of, of amazing opportunities, not only for women as a whole, but also um, now for, for Black women. There's also a Black women's entrepreneurial accelerator that they have developed and has been very successful in helping um, Black women business owners achieve success in um, their respective businesses or looking to grow and um, further scale their business. So there are a tremendous amount of opportunities there. Um, the family entrepreneurship piece, we also have a number of students as well as, of course, alums who either have worked for their family's business or their goal by way of pursuing the MBA was to come back and be involved in their family's business. And so we have a center that's devoted to um, any you know, kind of family entrepreneurial um, interests as well. Uh, the Cutler Center for Investments and Finance, all things related to the finance and investments industry. And so for those of you who are looking at really kind of expanding your knowledge and um, your interest in going into the finance space, there are a number of resources and opportunities that are listed there as well. Um, and then one of the, uh, the newer institutes is our Franchising Institute. And so uh, the Tariq Fahid uh, Franchise Institute is beginning to uh, develop their programming and engage with uh, those who are looking to either go into the franchise space, maybe they've already been a business owner and they're looking to maybe kind of you know, expand out and learn how franchising works, or maybe they're thinking about going into business for themselves and having an opportunity to join a franchise might be there. So there are a number of opportunities that you can take advantage of um, that will be coming up through um, that center as well. Um, we'll have time to talk about you know, again, some of these different opportunities. And obviously, um, as you move forward and you're considering uh, perhaps applying to BAPS, and there'll certainly be plenty of time for us to be able to talk more about some of the opportunities for you to get involved 
in any of the centers. Um, but happy years. I'm curious to hear about um, any of your experience, either working with the centers or uh, with anyone that you know that's been successful in being involved in the centers as well. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you, Terence. Uh, I've worked with uh, the Blank Center a lot. Um, uh, firstly, uh, for me to be at Babson, I had a scholarship from the Blank Center, uh, a significant one. Uh, also, they run a lot of like programs like the Beta Challenge. Uh, they also run the Summer Venture Program. I was part of the Summer Venture Program throughout uh, last summer, where me and my other colleague, which, which is a, who is a co founder uh, in the venture that we are launching, uh, he's a two year MBA and is returning to Babson now in his second year. We had the whole summer we were launching on uh, developing our venture, uh, coming up with products and with guidance from uh, professors with guidance from our leaders from the Blank Center. I have also worked with the uh, Cutler Center. I took equities as an elective. Uh, Patrick Grigor runs the Cutler Center at the, uh, the Babson uh, Fund. He runs the Babson Fund uh, where students can invest, can participate in investing in the equities uh, markets. He's a tremendous professor. He's excellent. He's so well gifted. He manages it. He's the managing director and he's also the professor. So he teaches equities. I took equities. I had an opportunity to meet with him so many times. We pitched equities together inside the class and outside the class. And I have colleagues that I know who have worked with Sewell. Um, certainly, I, uh, there's a lady, some of you will know her because she's also in leadership. Chusi, she worked for the Sewell. I got to know a lot of their programs through her. Uh, I know colleagues who are working at the Social Innovation. Um, there's the Lewis Center. And I've met all these people. Um, they're doing wonderful programs. All you need to do, like when you come to Babson, is like come in with an open mind, extend yourself to all these senders. They'll embrace you. All of them, they are willing, they are men, they are there for you. And I have met uh, Ingram, who runs the Franchise Institute. He's a wonderful guy. He's so raring to go to building that uh, institute. So yeah, I have like interfered, like I've worked with almost all these centers in one capacity or another. I've been at the foundry where we did a lot of designing of our products. So yeah, just come in with, open, with an open mind and extend yourself across all these centers whenever you need, that, you need the help. They are manned with competent staff and they're just there to help you like uh, in your academic journey, in your entrepreneurial journey now as a student and later on as an alumni. Yeah, there's so many different ways to get involved. And I think really, you know, when someone asked me to describe Babson in, in one word, you know, obviously entrepreneurship tends to be the one that most people think of, but, but for me, it's collaboration. And I think just seeing these different institutes and then hearing uh, Happy Years' experience in connecting not only with these centers as a student, but also with um, some of his classmates that have done the same. You know, that spirit of collaboration is definitely the, you know, there at Babson. And for those who are wanting to get more involved, there's certainly ways to be able to do that, for sure. So um, I want to switch gears and I want to talk a bit about the application process. Now, I'm going to speak a little bit at a high level in a way. I'm going to obviously incorporate um, some things that are unique to Babson, but really wanted to take some time here to kind of talk about in general what the process is like and then certainly um, we'll get happier's experience you know coming from zimbabwe and kind of working through the admissions uh, application process and making that transition to becoming a student at babson so again i want to kind of talk a little bit high level um talk about some things that can help you prepare for the mba application process and certainly if babson is is on your list of schools that you're planning to apply to these will be things that um, will help you be successful in the uh, in the process as well. Um, so this is a few things that, that are here that you can do to uh, as you get ready to apply. First of which obviously is identify your goals. Now, for many of you, you know exactly what it is you wanna do. Um, I'll be honest, for some of you, you'll find that thing you wanna do and you'll do it and you'll be successful at it for others. You may start to do something and then halfway through the program, you realize, you know, I thought I wanted to do this and I absolutely don't want to do this anymore. I want to switch gears. And that is perfectly fine. That is OK. But if you do have an idea of what your goals are and you can um, state those uh, explicitly 
throughout either your application or through the MBA interview, that certainly will help you be uh, successful in the process. The same is with uh, articulating your story. You know, for some of you, you may have a particular background, a particular story that kind of uh, relates to why the MBA makes sense for you at this point, why you want to pursue the uh, institutions that you're considering, and how, again, the, the MBA can help you to take that next step in your career. And if you can articulate that, again, either through your essay, through your interview, um, ways that can help you know, your application stand out in general. The applications, in a way, kind of sort of talk to us. And so oftentimes, we're able to kind of get to know you, even if it's on paper at first. And certainly, um, once we uh, meet you during your interview, we get a chance to really get a feel for um, what makes you such a special candidate. Um, as you are, and I'm saying no before you go, it's not necessarily before you go to school, but it's oftentimes before you go and begin the process. It's again, just kind of understanding some things that you need to do in order to not only um, prepare for the application process, but help you to determine what schools might be successful um, for you as you are applying. So again, Babson is known for entrepreneurship. Um, again, as I mentioned before, you don't have to want to be an entrepreneur. You don't have to want to have any interest in entrepreneurship at all. But knowing that Babson has its strengths in entrepreneurship, there are so many opportunities for you to be successful in that space. If you feel like having some synergies with those who are entrepreneurs is something that you're interested in, then Babson may make sense for you. You know, other institutions, if they're known you know, for finance and you're thinking of going into finance or if you're thinking of going into marketing, that might be some uh, strengths that you might consider as well. Um, speaking of finances, you know, obviously um, having a sense of what your financial situation looks like is certainly going to be helpful as you are uh, preparing for your MBA journey. And so, you know, this is something that we can definitely kind of work with you as you are preparing your application to get a sense of what uh, things look like for you and whether or not um, you know, the timing is right for you to pursue your MBA journey. Of course, as you have these conversations, either with your, your colleagues, with your peers, with any you know, family members, you know, spouses, anything of that nature, that's certainly something that's gonna be an important part of the, um, of the overall process. And of course, having a sense of um, what that financial situation looks like is certainly going to be helpful for you. Um, and then the last two, you know, engaging with the admissions team and engaging with the BAPSA community. Again, this kind of goes back to some of the things that we were talking about earlier. And, you know, this is a great first step is, you know, coming into a, um, a webinar such as this, getting a chance to hear from us, you get a chance to, to know us, you get our information, you're able to reach out and say, hey, I attended this session, I'm interested in learning more. And I want to, you know, be um, kind of perhaps, you know, pursue the application process. And again, these are things that we remember, even though, you know, we work with a lot of candidates, you know, oftentimes we will remember, you know, those who, um, who are participating in other events or who maybe just kind of stand out and say, hey, I'm looking at doing this. And this is, you know, something that, that I think, you know, Babson can help me be successful in. And oftentimes, you know, we may see that you remind us of someone that per pursued the program before, or there's just something special about you that just, you know, we feel like you'd be a great contributor to the community. And so oftentimes that level of engagement certainly does help as you are taking those steps. So uh, happy as anything you want to add, anything you want to kind of highlight as far as your experience in uh, preparing for your application and how you researched and came um, up to Babson as being one of your top choices? Yes, yes, Terence, thanks a lot. Uh, I'm going to touch on three aspects, uh, identifying your goals, articulating your story, and then planning for the finances, because I know that matters a lot for our students that are applying out of Africa. Um, when it comes to identifying your, your goals, start with where you are. Uh, I, you know, I've uh, met a lot of people who have reached out to me and they said, uh, do you think I qualify? And my, my, my response has always been that you have to start with where you are in your journey as a person. What have you done in the past? Where do you want to go in the future? And how does Babson College fit in with your goals? It's very, very important. 
because sometimes if you look at a lot of other people's profiles, you may find that some others come to Babson as already accomplished entrepreneurs. And you might think that discounts you, but that's not the case. Uh, depending on where you are and where you want to go, you'll be a great fit for Babson College. So when you're identifying your goals, the first step is to, having known where you are, go uh, back to research about Babson. Uh, like imagine what the atmosphere uh, feels like. And look at those things that uh, would appeal to you, like the institutions that we just uh, saw, like the Butler Launchpad, the Blank Center. Uh, look for something that appeals to you as an individual. So if finance is something that appeals to you, you'd lean more towards the Cutler Center. So see how that links to your goals with, uh, according to where you are right now. And importantly, you want to identify your goals because you need to build them in your, in your story. And your story is important because you're highlighting uh, what you have done so far. But most importantly, when you're highlighting that, you need to dwell on the things that you haven't done uh, based on the skill set that you think you have or the skill set that you think you lack. And how Babson is a very good fit to bridge that skills gap. Your story should emerge. Um, there is no like typical story for Babson. Uh, as uh, Terence has already said, Babson educates uh, entrepreneurs of all kinds. They come from all walks of life. So you talk of entrepreneurship, you talk of people who want to work in big organizations and work into product launches like product management. We have a lot of those that go to work at uh, uh, big companies, maybe your Amazons of this world, your Microsoft and so forth. And while they're there, they own the product uh, development process from origination to launch. That is also entrepreneurship. And in this day and age, corporates are looking for people like that, students who understand that uh, they can originate an idea and launch it and grow it from zero revenue to uh, like maybe millions and billions of dollars. Organizations are looking for that. And then Bobson is a very good fit for that. If you want to, to go into business for yourself, that is also great. Bobson is also like rank number one for entrepreneurship. So you, we talk of corporate entrepreneurship and then you talk of maybe launching your startup. Bobson is the place for you to be for both uh, those things and your story your story should your individuality should emerge out of the story that uh you write to admissions directors and your individuality should emerge in such a way that when so many essays have been read the admissions officers can easily remember you because your story is unique you don't have to be generic you don't have to try and copy anybody's story whichever way you grew up see the skills that you know your environment equipped you with and the skills that you like to go into the next stage and how Babson can equip you to get that skill set for you to be able to do well in the future. And if you can paint that story very, very well in a unique way, in a way that is unique to you, then you find that uh, you stand out and you get in. So let me talk quickly about finances. Uh, for the finances, you just have to be prepared. Um, like I first, you know, I went to an admissions event like this. It was organized by Babson and I wanted to know more information, but it also helped that they, by attending the admissions uh, uh, session, they waived the application fee. I like that. I'm not going to lie to you. I like that because it saved money. When you're going on a school journey, every penny counts. Take advantage of those uh, situations like those sessions like this one. If it results in a wave of the application fee, take advantage of that. Go in, get ahead and put in your application. You have absolutely nothing to lose. So when it comes to your finances as well, having uh, you need to prepare for the first deposit. It's very, very important. And then you need to prepare for uh, the second deposit. That is also very, uh, very important. You can work with Terence. He can equip you with like, give you the ballpark figures about that, but that should not even intimidate you at all. And then the most important thing that I'm gonna talk today about is that the need to bridge, like having, maybe you get a scholarship. Uh, many people get some form of scholarships when they apply to uh, Babson and get admitted. Now funding that shortfall is very, very scary to a lot of African students. And I know that because I've advised a lot of my colleagues from Africa 
is because like as a continent, our like income level is just generally low. So when you hear that your shortfall is 50,000, you're like, no, 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 no. You start talking to people that have never applied to business school, that have no business advising you and they're telling you, no, that's too much money, you can't go there. But there are organizations that are there that can help you where you do not have to have collateral. In the USA, you don't have to have credit history anywhere, not in Africa, not here. And I know for a lot of Africans, credit history, they don't just have credit history. A lot of Africans try to live their life without borrowing money at all. And in this economy, in this society, in the US, your credit history is very, very important. So if you try to apply to a US bank direct for credit, if you don't have credit history, they're not, they're not gonna touch you. But there are organizations like Prodigy Finance, like Empower Finance, that are meant specifically for students that are coming all over the world with no co-signer in the USA, with uh, no credit history in the USA, with no collateral uh, or collateralized assets in the USA that will be able to bridge that finance gap for you to come into the USA. And when you consider that, look at what you'll be able to do after you have achieved your MBA. That is the most important thing. Don't look at where you are right now. Look at where you are going. If you can do that, then you stand a very realistic chance of being here. You don't have to be afraid. Yes, you may feel fear, that's normal. You feel anxiety, that's normal, but that's no reason to stop you. You have to be determined and you have to ask for advice from very, very relevant sources. Most of the time, the thing, people ask advice from people who, you know, their journeys are just not aligned to, to you. So look for advice from people who have done it, people who have come from all over African countries. I know there are people from Nigeria, Kenya, Zimbabwe, South Africa, who have come here to the USA, not just in Babson, but at all other institutions, seek them out. They'll give you relevant advice. Yes, thank you so much for that. And, you know, just to the point too, you know, it, it's tremendous to see each of you who is here today. Um, I'm assuming that for many of you, you're beginning your MBA application journey now and you're planning to apply to start in 2023. So to be able to have a full year for many of you to be able to not only plan, you know, to go through the process, but also to plan financially for it. You know, you're taking a great first step in, in getting kind of the early jump on what you need to do in order to be successful. All right, so with that being said, um, specifically for the Babson application, there are a, a few things that they we're looking for. Um, so in lieu, uh, obviously uh, the uh, dem demographic information, in lieu of an actual admissions essay, we actually do four short answer questions. Um, the, one of the questions really still does kind of, you know, get after the why you want to pursue an MBA and why Babson and how your goals will help you be successful. Um, but then we also want to learn a little bit more about you, you know, how you've been successful in overcoming challenges. Um, we're also curious to learn a few fun facts, things that kind of make you sort of stand out as an individual, you know, maybe, you know, some of you maybe participated on a Survivor TV show or something like that, or maybe, you know, like myself, um, I'm, I'm a marathoner. I've completed five marathons. And so that's, you know, something that you might want to indicate on, thank you, <laughs> indicate on your, um, on your fun facts, just to give us a little color and help you to help us to understand a little bit more about you. Um, we only require one letter of recommendation. And for MBA applicants, that letter should come from a professional reference. Now, with that being said, we do understand that for many of you, you may be working with companies or with organizations in that you're beginning your MBA journey and you don't want to let your employer know that you're applying. And that's perfectly okay. So if that recommend, recommendation comes from uh, perhaps a work colleague, someone that you may have worked with formerly, another, a former manager, um, any one of those is perfectly okay. Um, we do ask that they are professional references, specifically if you're applying to the MBA. Um, however, you know, academic references, we generally um, would rather not see those unless your primary uh, work experience is working in um, some sort of an academic environment. And so if you've been doing research and then you know, the person that you're reporting to is uh, a professor or in an academic position, that's I think one of the um, options where it's okay. 
Um, we do need transcripts from uh, each of the institutions that you've attended, both undergraduate as well as graduate institutions. Um, at the time of your application, unofficial copies are perfectly okay. So if you just want to upload a PDF, we've even accepted you know, phone screenshots. So, but just as long as they show, you know, kind of your name, the degree that you've earned and the date that you've earned it along with those grades, those are, are certainly helpful. Um, an updated copy of your resume. Um, and, and ideally, and I'll be honest with you, I've seen some resumes that um, have not really listed out, you know, some of the specifics. So um, ideally those that have um, the dates of your employment, the type of employment that you had, the position in the company, and then of course, um, summary of the duty. So essentially as if you were applying to a professional job. Um, we do have an optional essay. Now, for those of you who maybe have some additional circumstances that you wanna talk about in more detail, perhaps there was uh, a gap in your resume and uh, there's something in particular that you wanna explain. Um, perhaps there was a semester when you were in university where things didn't go as you expected, but maybe there was you know, something, a circumstance that you want to talk about a little bit more. You can use the optional essay in order to do that. Again, it is optional. You don't have to talk about anything, but if you feel as though you want to give a little bit more background into a particular uh, thing that's a part of your application, by all means, please feel free uh, to use that. Um, in regards to the various test scores, so while we do accept either the GMAT or the GRE, and we don't have a preference for either or, um, I will tell you that for the 2023, 22 and 23 application cycle, uh, test, GMAT and GRE test scores are completely optional. So if you feel as though your application is strong without submitting a test score, you are absolutely welcome to be able to submit that and we will consider it. No questions asked. All you have to do is on the application, indicate that you do not choose to include your test scores. Um, again, if you've taken the test and you feel as though your test uh, is a strong um, score, that's a strong indicator and, and helps to complement your overall application, feel free to submit that. We will review that and include that as a part of your application as well. Um, and then particularly for, for language scores, um, if you have either attended an institution in where the primary medium of instruction was in English, or if the primary uh, language of your, your home country is English, then um, the test scores are not required. You can waive that requirement. Um, if any of those is not the case, then um, we do require the test scores. That's something that if you wanna reach out to us and, and ask and confirm whether or not um, the test score is required. You can feel free to do that when um, you submit your application and we can walk you through uh, whether or not those test scores um, are required. And so then once you've submitted all of your documents and your application is complete, then the next step um, would be an invitation to interview. Not everyone it receives an invitation to interview, but everyone who receives an admissions offer does have to go through an interview. And of course, those are uh, done virtually. And as Happy Years mentioned, um, while there is a $100 um, application fee for, uh, for Babson's application, uh, but again, once you go through each of um, these processes and submit your application, then the next step is the interview and then, of course, um, the uh, final decision in terms of an offer. Uh, Happy Years, any Thing you want to and actually before I, I jump to you I know that there were a couple of questions I'm trying to go in, going through a bit of the the content and then uh, I know many of you have questions and I want to make sure we have plenty of time to be able to get to as many questions as possible so I'm going to try to uh, rush through and get through the rest of the content we're, we're almost done with the content but we'll definitely take as many questions as we can toward the end but happy is anything you want to add in regards to the application yeah uh, just uh... I want to talk something about the optional essay and the interview. Uh, so for the optional essay, this is this is a massive opportunity for you, like Terence has already said, to explain a situation that has stood out in your application process. Don't wait for the admissions officers to ask you about that. It's better if you just get ahead of it, like he said. Uh, if there was a, a semester in in your undergrad where you didn't do. Uh, too well, and you have a credible explanation for that. This way, you get to say, "Oh, in semester two, when I was a, a, an undergrad in my first year or second year, uh, 
I had this kind of circumstances and this led to my sort of like academics uh, suffering a bit. But importantly, you're not saying that to shift the blame, uh, be open about the lessons that you learned through that process and how you are a better person or better prepared to weather such life storms because sometimes it happens, sometimes there's an illness in the family, sometimes there's a death in the family, sometimes the finances are not so stable enough to allow you to perform to your uh, optimal best. But when you're explaining this, it's not about shifting blame, it's about owning the outcome on the transcript and the lessons that you learned and how you have been a resilient from there on to make sure that there isn't a repeat of that kind of performance as you go forward. So that is important. Just get out ahead of it if there is any, any hiccup in, in your undergrad studies. And then on the interview process, um, you would have already said your story in the application process. So the interviewer will know your story, the admissions officers will know the story, and they're looking for consistency of that story. So you need to brush up on what you wrote in the essays, uh, what you wrote in your application essays. In preparation for that virtual interview, you need to know your story very, very well. Be consistent. Don't come across as if the story is not yours. Like own the story and be consistent uh, on the story. That's that's all I have to say. Great, wonderful, thank you. Um, specifically for um, those of you who are applying as an international applicant, um, a couple of things I wanted to point out. Um, certainly apply early to ensure that the visa process is um, successful for you. And so I usually encourage candidates to apply um, in one of the first you know, two to three rounds in the process to be able to get your admissions decision and begin working on the visa as quickly as you can. Um, of course, we talked about the language test scores. And so if you do have to take a language test score, you also wanna give yourself a bit of time to prepare for those language tests, especially if you're also planning on uh, taking the GMAT or GRE and you wanna devote time to be able to study for those tests as well. You wanna make sure that you've got um, enough time for that. Um, GBAT and GRE tests are typically valid for five years, but language tests are valid for, uh, for two years. Now for us, we accept either the TOEFL, the IELTS, or we also accept the Duolingo test. And so I know for some of you who may be looking at an option that maybe is a little bit more either affordable as well as potentially um, a bit uh, uh, kind of a user-friendly and more kind of accessible, um, the Duolingo oftentimes is one that gives you those options as well. So feel free to, to submit any test that you feel most comfortable with. We don't have a preference for not only the uh, GMAT or GRE, but also any of the language tests. Any one of those is perfectly fine for us. And then transcript requirements. Um, for most of you, uh, transcripts uh, may, be, um, may be printed in English. Um, for those of you who are, have attended an institution where, again, the primary language is not English and the transcript itself was also not written in English, um, we do need a translation. And so what I would probably recommend is using a service that translates your transcripts into English for us to evaluate as we are reviewing application in the early uh, part of the process. However, I would not necessarily do an official like West evaluation, or any one of those official language evaluations yet, because once you are admitted and you, you know, choose to enroll at Babson, then we will need an official uh, evaluation. So you don't wanna spend the money to do an evaluation officially only to have to turn around and do a second one later on in the process. So um, I would find a service that at least trans, uh, um, uh, changes your transcripts into English, and then you can do the official process later on after you've been admitted and you um, and you enroll. Happy years. Anything you want to add? Um, not really. I think you covered this one very well. But just for applying early for the to ensure our visa, your visa comes out early. Once you're ready to apply for the visa, please uh, do so uh, to, to avoid the situation where, for me, it turned out great. But for a lot of people, sometimes end up deferring attendance because the visa has come out like a bit late. So if you just get ahead of that process, 
and apply early so that you can just uh, start uh, as soon as others are also starting. Thank you. And unfortunately, we're going through a lot of actually right now, a lot of candidates who um, are, are um, sitting um, and applying for visa interviews and unfortunately have either been rejected or have had to um, try to you know get emergency appointments. And so again, orientation starts on Monday. And so there are a lot of people that have kind of gone through the process over the last few weeks. And so hopefully applying early and getting everything taken care of um, takes care of that. Yeah, uh, sorry, sorry, Terence. Let me just jump in a bit uh, because you talked about visa rejections. I just have to say a few things. Uh, a common reason for visa rejections is usually the finances. Uh, they want to see evidence that you can actually fund your studies when you are here. And for a lot of students that come here, some of them come from backgrounds where the family owns a business, and some of them have like funding from other extended family members. My advice to you is. If you have funding from an extended family member, that is okay. But one of the most credible ways in which you can show or demonstrate that you can fund your studies is just, just get that funding from Empower. You are not obliged to take it when you get here. So if your angle is enough to fund your education once you get to Babson, Babson will not say, oh, your funding was supposed to come from Empower, so we need that funding from Empower but just get a credible source of funding where the US embassy doesn't have to ask you for a lot of information about whether that will come through or not. If you have a business as a family, there may be exchange rate uh, involvements and so forth. If your business is a lot of money, they can still fund you when you get to the United States of uh, uh, America for your studies. Uh, but for the credibility part, for you not to have to be to answer a lot of questions about whether a family is enough financial resources, sometimes you can just get ahead of that by getting like uh, funding from Prodigy or Empower Finance. And then you don't have to take that up. You're not penalized by Empower for not taking the funding after they've approved your funding. So you can get here and your brother can fund you, your uncle can fund you, but you'd have gone through the visa hoops without so many challenges. Thank you. That's great, wonderful, thank you. Um, really quick, just wanted to highlight a few things in um, relation to our application. Um, we do have a few upcoming events. Um, our open house is going to be taking place on October 5th and 6th. So we definitely encourage you to join us and be a part of that and get to learn not only everything um, that Babson has to offer, but also get to um, get kind of your first Babson lecture, um, be able to meet other members of the admissions as well as uh, current students and alumni, um, and really just get a, a full feel for what it's really like. Um, and it's virtually, uh, but what it's really like to be a part of the Babson community. We also have a number of virtual class visits on our website. Those are posted now. More will probably be coming throughout the fall, but those are, are posted now. So if you want to sign up for a virtual class and get a feel um, for what a class is like, you can definitely uh, take advantage of those over the next couple of months. And then really quick, just wanted to highlight um, for application deadlines, Specifically, as you see, the round one, one year program, we have a early round one application deadline for the one year MBA, which of course is on September 7th. Um, so after that, the next four rounds are the application deadlines for the two year MBA. However, each time you see a round one, if, if you see round one in October, that's actually the round two up, up deadline for the one year MBA. The January 11th deadline is the round three deadline for the one year MBA. So we've just kind of um, just kind of moved the one year um, application process um, along with the rest of those deadlines. So, but just um, for the sake of the presentation and not making it as confusing, I listed it out as such. So, if you're thinking about pursuing the one year MBA, rest assured you don't have to only apply on September 7th. There are other op opportunities to apply. However, that program does start in May. So I do encourage you to apply early so that you can get through the rest of the process as quickly as possible. And I have a nice little surprise for you all. So while the applications um, actually, I said that they're open now, they actually won't officially be opening up until Tuesday. Uh, so the 30th. So if you plan on applying, just wait just a little bit. It's coming up on Tuesday. But I am waiving application fees for any uh, lane applicants. So just let us know that you uh, either participated in today's webinar or that you are part of um, the lane network. And I'm waiving application fees. So 
as Happy Air said, take advantage of attending these events and being a part of um, these types of, of opportunities. And I wanna take that first step and, and make this not only um, as successful of an application process, but also financially um, accessible for you as well. So your application fee is waived, just let us know. Before you submit your application, um, just send us an, an email. You can, and I'll have the contact information um, on the last slide. Um, just let us know that you uh, participated in this session and that you'd like your fee waived. We have to apply the waiver before you submit your application. So make sure you do that first before you actually apply. All right, our contact information is here. Um, I wanna take time for questions. I wanna obviously be respectful of, of your time, but I am here. It's only four o'clock in the East. I have plenty of time, so um, I'm welcome to answer any questions that you all have. Um, I saw that the, the uh, chat was going off, but I don't know, maybe, I don't know how do we wanna do, we wanna just do raise, raising hands or do we wanna go through? Yeah. So okay. I'm going to lead on that. Thank you so much, Terrence and Apia. Thank you so much for being on the call. And you know, your assistant, like you kind of went into everything, telling us experiences, and that was pretty cool. Thank you for sharing your journey with us. Um, I know I was seeing some questions in the chat, um, but I just want to start off with this first question. I know looking through the concentration, someone was asking about the STEM program and the two years program, if you could shed more light in that aspect. That's a that's pretty big for many international students. So if we could just highlight that before we go into other questions. Absolutely, yes. So we do have uh, two STEM concentrations. And you, if you take either the business analytics and machine learning or the quantitative finance concentration, and I believe each of those is uh, at least 12 credits. Now, that being said, the MBA program as a whole is 45 credits. About a third of that is your core. So you've got approximately 30 or so credits from which to choose your electives. And so if you take one of those concentrations, again, about 12 or so credits, you're able to uh, pursue the STEM designation, which gives you the additional 24 months of OPT to be able to work in the United States up to three years. And it also gives you still a lot more bandwidth to be able to pursue either an additional concentration or take any additional courses that you might be interested in. So, so that's definitely there. And I'm happy if, if you want to add any additional context on that or. Uh, not, not really. I think that's, that's very straightforward. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Awesome. Right. Um, so guys, I saw a lot of chat people saying thank you again. A uh, big thank you to you and the team, uh, Therese, for giving our, our community this waiver. So guys, if you haven't filled the Google Sheets to fill in your details for them to capture your details for applying. Please go ahead and do that. Fill the attendance sheet on this webinar. If you're not yet, there's no way you can get that awesome and you know, a funding given by the program to you. And also click on the link to join the community as we're migrating to Discord. So in the next 30 minutes, uh, hopefully if Terrence can stay that long or the next 15 to 30, we're gonna open the floor to questions. So I'm just gonna start with uh, one of the questions I saw in the chat. So the person question is that like, what key factors or decisions and cues do you look for in applications that make you consider a candidate for full funding? And what are the ranges of funding opportunities that are available to students across uh, the first year, I mean, the one year program or the two year program? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, so we take a holistic approach to reviewing your application. And you'll hear that, you'll go to a lot of sessions, you'll probably hear that phrase. If you go to 10 sessions, you'll probably hear it 10 times, I'll be honest with you. But it, it's an absolute fact. And this is not my first graduate business school that I've worked at. And so I can tell you with absolute certainty, we absolutely do look holistically at each candidate. So um, for, for example, you may have a good deal of experience, but maybe your academic performance wasn't as strong as you might have liked. But because you've worked, say, for 10 years or so, we will lean a little bit more closely on your experience, what you've done. Have you had progressively increasing responsibilities, for example? And so those things we'll look at not only as factors for admission, but then also consideration for um, any sort of scholarships. Um, we have a wide range of scholarships that go from as little as $5,000 all the way up through full tuition. And so usually, you know, we're looking at, of course, you know, those who have strong overall 
uh, academic and professional backgrounds, you know, will, will be in consideration for scholarships, but also leadership experience as well as leadership potential um, are also important considerations as, as well. So for example, if you've been um, perhaps involved not only within um, your, your uh, where you're working, but maybe you're involved in some community-based um, organizations and, and have had some increasing responsibilities there. Perhaps you've led, you know, drives to um, to help with you know those who have food insecurities or something along those lines. Any sort of leadership that again translates into the MBA classroom and then also potentially into what you want to do in the future. All those things not only are helpful in terms of admission, but then also for potential um, scholarship eligibility. So again, there's a wide range of things that, that we're looking at. But um, I'm going to turn it over to one of our scholarship recipients to, to give a little bit more insight. So happy, I'm curious to hear from you, kind of how you approached this same type of question before you um, were admitted into Babson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, well, when, when I got admitted into uh, Babson, I had a scholarship. Um, it was quite significant, and but I also had the guts to ask for more. <laughs> so it's something that, that I forgot to say, have those guts like ask for more, you're not penalized for asking for more money. Um, and even if they say no, it's okay, it, it won't hurt. Uh, but if you can just ask for more, uh, but like, uh, like we said in the earlier uh, session, you just let your story image a uh, very well when you, with, when you're applying, uh, let your individuality show, uh, let your ability to work in a collaborative community uh, show as well. And as Terence has already said, if if there are any areas like your application is going to be looked at uh, as a whole in totality, and you cannot really rig that part, uh, but lean, uh, lean on your strength and uh, use that to uh, to get what you want. So if you have more work experience, uh, talk about how that has helped you develop as you, you, you go along and how that will help you um, have a unique perspective in a Babson classroom. That's very, very important. Um, and I certainly am one of the students that came here with a lot of work experience. And I can't tell you how many times my colleagues have congratulated me for bringing in a perspective in a classroom setup where my experience showed, like the practicality of doing business showed, like in class, your peers, they will, like, they will appreciate that. And so let that emerge when you're in an interview, when you're writing your essay, let the fact that you have more experience show and lean, that's your strength. And if you have less experience anywhere, but you have strong academics, also, that's very, very, that's very, very important. Because a classroom is still a, a classroom, we still deal with theories, and then we still deal with application of those theories in a real business world. And at Babson, they are very big on application. So having the theoretical part right is very, very important. So also lean on the strength of your academics if that is where you're coming from, and how you'll be able to contribute something unique in a classroom setup. I think that's very, very important. I was asked that in the interview when I interviewed it, like what's something unique that you will contribute to the to your peers because they also want to learn from you if you can figure that out if it's academics if you are going to be strong on making sure that everything is like up to the t if you're doing business analytics for instance if you're doing uh, operations and information management for instance lean on that if that is your strength and then you'll be working with others that have more uh, practical experience to make sure that what Ever assignment you are given that mimics the real world, um, you enrich the learning, the overall learning experience. So there is everything for everyone. Like everyone is going to, who is going to be applying at Babson. Just find your strength and lean on it and use it to ask for more if you need more funds or something like that. Awesome. Thank you for sharing with us, Athens. Yeah. So I see another question. <clears throat> around the GERE GMAT waiver. I know you said earlier that this could be optional for applicants applying, but again, like um, what are the criteria you consider before you give this waiver? It's like you consider, oh, we're gonna waive your GERE or GMAT. And then again, 
for candidates who request for waiver, do you think kind of influences their eligibility to qualify for scholarship opportunities? Yeah, great question. So for us, and, and that's a question that as you're preparing your MBA application, you want to ask individually each school what their uh, approach is to um, the GMAT or GRE. At Babson, it is completely optional. You are not penalized either way. Um, you'll be, be given full consideration whether you submit the test or not. Literally, if you choose not to submit the test, all you have to do is just check a box that says you don't want to submit the test. That said, um, I think that, you know, again, it, looking at your application, if you feel as though your application is strong without the test, if you've got a strong professional background, you've got a strong academic background, and you feel as though, you know, what you bring to, to Babson will not only help you be successful in your MBA journey, but you also be able to bring um, your strengths to the community and add to the community, then those are things that we're definitely looking for. And certainly, you know, the GRE or the GMAT, you know, can be an added benefit, but it's certainly, if you feel as though your overall application is strong, it will not hurt you. And, and again, not only for admission, but then also for scholarship consideration. Um, I will say, you know, for, for some candidates, again, if you feel as though there's something in your application that you want to strengthen, perhaps, again, maybe your academic performance wasn't as strong as you'd like, even though your professional background is strong, but you feel as though the test might help to give a little bit more um, depth into that. So for a lot of people, you know, of course, uh, part of the MBA experience is um, having a strong quantitative background. And maybe your quantitative experience in your um, university wasn't as strong as you'd like. And maybe your professional background doesn't incorporate as much quantitative uh, experience as you would like. Perhaps in that instance, taking a test might help to balance all of that out, if that makes sense. For us, it's not required, but for other schools, you may want to take a look at that and see whether or not that's a, a consideration. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us. So like, so this is like a very key question. Like we always want our community people to be pretty much aware when admissions obviously come in. It's a tool, SWOT questions is like, for you so far, I know, having been in the admission space across different programs in the, you know, top MBA programs in the US, what are the things you've seen in applicants, applications that you feel like, oh my God, this is so not, it's like, you don't want this kind of applicants putting something like this or being in this way in the applications. And also on the positive side, what are the things you have ever seen in most of the applicants you've considered into the program that really stood out and you would want more applicants to really highlight this so, you know, come with this profile when applying to Babson? Um, someone like happier. <laughs> that's one of the ones that we like yeah it just has you know just an amazing just professional background and story and it obviously you know has come and has been successful and comes from and to be perfectly honest with you um in addition to everything else also comes from a country where we don't see as many applicants at least at the time as we would have liked and him and i we've had extensive conversations about um what to do in order to strengthen um, the uh, pipeline opportunities and the engagement. And so, you know, to this point, you know, we had these conversations months ago and now to be able to get outreach from, you know, such a, an amazing organization is just proof positive that some of the things that we were talking about kind of sort of manifested itself. And so um, I think those types of things are important, I think on the positive side. And even if these are, you know, we had this conversation when he was a student, but these are also conversations that I've had with, uh, with prospective applicants. And so I think those types of things, you know, definitely can add and, and further sort of strengthen um, the opportunity for someone to be successful. Um, on the flip side of it, um, I've seen quite a few things. Um, I, I remember one interview that I had, this was an in-person interview. Um, and I think I asked a general question about, you know, someone's ability to, to, to be successful in the classroom. And it, it was just, I can't really explain it here because the virtual screen isn't as, as big, but I just remember him kind of just sort of sitting back. He didn't kick his feet up, but he almost, as if he kicked his feet up, put his arm kind of on the back of the chair and just gave a real, just kind of kind of arrogant type of an answer. Like, like of course I'm gonna be you know contributing in the class. And it just really put us off. So 
you just you definitely want to make sure that you know you remain as professional you know as possible in in these types of interview environments um making sure that you know spell check <laughs> um proofreading all those things in your essay um we've seen numerous applications that have either spelled Babson wrong, called as Babson University, yeah, another institution. We've seen that time and again. It's almost a running joke. <laughs> Every school has seen it, you know. So we know you're applying to multiple schools, but just be mindful of the um, the uh, essay that you're submitting. Also, to um, answer the question, you know, we have four short answer questions that are very specific, and so um, what we don't want you to do is submit a statement of purpose when we did not ask for a statement of purpose. So that's one thing that we keep in mind as well. Other institutions who don't have a preference for that, that's perfectly fine, but essentially kind of answering the question that is asked of you by the institution. I think that's one of the first things that um, you'll want to do. And again, you may have parts of your essay that are somewhat generic and you can, you know, use and incorporate into each essay, but just know that you just want to do kind of some of that but try to be as unique as possible. Great, great, thank you. Yeah, so I see a question from Vivian. This question is pretty exciting. So Vivian, I would say for the second part of the question about running projects, real time ownership, I think our peers already spoke to her that earlier. You're given the opportunity to run projects, do equity stuff work by yourself, you know, on the job training. So I think that's it. But I think the key questions I'm gonna put forward to you, Terence, is really about you no know, minorities representation atmosphere in the community. And I know that's really sits in your office also. So if you wanna share with our community, what's how like the EDI initiative in Babson and how do you submit, I mean, you know, make the environment pretty open for international students. Absolutely. So I'm gonna talk about that at a high level and then I'll let Happy Airs come in and add his perspective. Um, so. So I work in the graduate admissions office, but I lead our diversity recruitment efforts. And so that comes with a lot of different things. So um, for those of you who are either in the United States or who have experience um, with those in the United States, um, a lot of our institutions um, are not as representative of a lot of Black, Hispanic, Native American, African, uh, Native African students, and even, you know, those who are coming in by way of either Europe or Canada, as we would like, and we want to do more to ensure that our communities are as diverse as possible, and have varying perspectives and unique voices. Um, and, and you're also bringing your authentic selves to the table. And so my role is to ensure that that happens. And, you know, I put a lot of, of effort and, and are very passionate about not only understanding how to connect with you know those who can bring those voices to the table but also what we can do to kind of further strengthen additional opportunities going forward happy years and i have talked about that extensively um, from from time to time as well as as with others of the community um, and so that's kind of a summary sort of of my job but also i do a lot of kind of partnerships and relationship building with different organizations not only you know you know, such as um, City of Lane, but also with um, organizations both within the Babson community as well as externally outside um, throughout the world, quite, quite frankly. And so, you know, kind of, again, my goal is just to make sure that, again, there's kind of a long pipeline of, of candidates that are coming into Babson. I work with a number of different offices. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Happy Years to talk about his experience in, in not only in the MBA community, but then also um, in the office that he has worked with and some of the opportunities he's taken advantage of through there. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Terence. Yeah, so I, I saw a question about uh, grad, graduate artist, assistantships and teaching opportunities earlier. So right, I was a grad assistant uh, in the office of uh, the diversity, equity and inclusion. So I worked for the chief of diversity and part of my job was just like a number crunching. <laughs> it's, 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 it's an analytics job, basically. You're analyzing the demographics of Babson and so forth at every level, students, staff, and faculty. And I'm confident to say that uh, Babson has been progressing each and every year, uh, getting better at uh, inclusion across like all the measured uh, categories. Uh, and that includes student of color uh, and also like 
like other other subcategories like uh, women representation and you know regional representations like um, Europe, Canada, Africa. I am very passionate about Africa. I don't want to lie to you. Every time I even somebody says I've been admitted into Babson, I like scream with happiness. <laughs> and I'm always available to help. So feel free to reach out uh, to me. I'll give you like frank advice as best as my experience has been. There might be slight differences across countries, but um, generally we're trying to be very, very progressive. Uh, in terms of the Babson atmosphere, uh, the most important thing is that uh, the school has been progressive. Uh, Terence has given us a massive lift in terms of recruitment for black students and not just in Africa, but also black students from the United States. And that is very, very important because when you get here, you want to learn as much as a black American history and experiences as possible. And a campus with enough black American students is very, very important uh, in, uh, in teaching you that. And Babson has been very, very progressive at that. Um, obviously, uh, as an institution, uh, we are doing much, much better. We want to keep doing better, but the progress has been positive uh, through and through, right? And when it comes to, uh, in terms of the school environment, the community, it's so inclusive come with a very open mind. I'm going to be honest with you, like they are progressive, like people, staff, uh, the faculty is very progressive. The students are amazing. I have friends from across the race and regional divide, and it's really an inclusive society where you can express yourself. I have not encountered any microaggressions in any situations, including the classroom. What I have seen is that people are so eager to learn about Africa. And sometimes I have to tell them, you know what, I don't understand like this other part, this could be East African and I'm from Southern Africa, or this could be West African. But the good thing is like, we have students from West Africa too. <laughs> so wait, I'm not so knowledgeable, I refer them to students from, I have colleagues and peers from like Nigeria and, and they are very up, upstanding human beings, uh, wonderful people. I've had like colleagues before I applied to Babson, I reached out to a student from Kenya because there was a student who was outgoing, who was from Kenya. And one of the alumni members just reached out to me. He, he, he is from the United States. He just reached out to me, he had seen my profile and he was like, yes, I got your profile from admissions. I want to walk uh, you through the, uh, uh, the process now that you have been admitted, what you have to do. And that was very, very helpful. In terms of taking advantage of the institutions, you have full access to all the institutions as a Babson student. So you have full access to all the resources just as every, any other student. And there won't be any situations where uh, your race or your gender or any of that limits you or your ability to interact with members of your peers, other students, staff members, and I'm talking about non-teaching staff, like the staff members that you see that make sure that the teaching staff runs smoothly, the support services to the academics, and also your faculty members, they've checked their biases over so many years, they've worked in academia for a long period of time, it really is a truly inclusive environment. But what we would want to see, obviously, is to see more and more representation as we go forward. And I think if you come to Babson, you, you experience something like, uh, like a great atmosphere. And it's an enabling at atmosphere where you will not be hamstrung by any of the other things, but you can you know, relate at almost all level. Yeah, and real, real quick, just want to add, um, we're probably one of the more diverse um, programs around. I think it's something like 75% of our candidates come from outside of the United States. So you get perspectives literally from all across the globe. Now that said, you know, no, uh, no environment is perfect. You know, we obviously, you know, we have, you know, issues, of course, you know, we're not immune to that, but, you know, particularly if, if any um, concern as it relates to any sort of diversity, equity, inclusion, or belonging, uh, type of perspective, the office, the uh, diversity, 
uh, in Equity and Inclusion Office and the Chief uh, Diversity and Inclusion Officer, I'm the happy as mentioned, is there and is a, uh, a, a true supporter of the, the community as a whole and can speak to any issues or incorporate any sorts of things necessary if there is any sort of issue that needs to be addressed. And so, you know, you know, it things happen. You know, we're not perfect. No school is perfect. We have our shared mission. But I think overall, um, we're definitely trending in the right direction. Absolutely. I agree with that. I saw this stats and it was staggering, the international composer of your program. So that mm -hmm. is really awesome. So I know we're kind of closing in on time. So I just really want to like this question um, from one of the applicants. And she was like, as an entrepreneur, I will have like um, about two years entrepreneurship experience um, applying to the program. Do you think should be a great fit with just under two years entrepreneurship? I know one and also for like GRE, GMAT program, is there like a benchmarking for those who want to write GRE or GMAT? Okay, should it's called by 700 or should it's called by 300 DZ? Any kind of benchmarking in that aspect? And that is something I want to highlight. And just a quick one for those who are yet to fill the application from, please go ahead and fill that. We're going to shut down that form exactly at the end of the webinar in the next few minutes. So go ahead, Terrence. Yeah, so, so please go ahead and fill those forms out. Um, and make sure you can qualify for the field as well. Um, there's really no minimum uh, test score that we're looking at. However, I will say that um, I would probably argue if you have somewhere in the neighborhood of about a, at least a 500 or better on the GMAT, um, I think at the very least you can be in consideration. Um, now, of course, if you score an 800 on the GMAT, that's tremendous. And you'll probably qualify for maximum funding and all of that. But if I would say, you know, anything that's over a 500 usually at least gets you kind of in conversation and, you know, they go from now. We have we admitted a candidate that's had below a 500? Absolutely. Have we denied candidates who've had a 700, a 750 uh, GMAT? Yes, we absolutely have as well. Because again, it goes back to the, um, the holistic approach that we we go about in, in reviewing the uh, the application. So um, something like I said in the 500 or so range, um, about 150 or so in each section of the GRE. So about a 300. Usually, those are the scores we tend to look at and say, okay, they're there. Let's look at every other aspect and then kind of go from there. But below that, that's when we start to want to look a little bit more closely at other um, specific aspects to see whether or not you know kind of overall. Um, you know, academically, you know, there are some strengths there, or if, if there's a professional um, skill set that that kind of balances that out. But again, we've seen these things happen, and we have absolutely um, have been able to to offer admission to those who have that. So I'm saying that don't <laughs> absolutely do not just kind of say, okay, it has to be a 500 or better, or else, because yes, we absolutely can admit someone who has below that, and we can certainly. Um, look at other options for those who have above that, but maybe have some other challenges in their application. Okay. And there's for someone who has like just two years entrepreneurship experience also, can he or she apply? Or they have to have more than that? No, actually, um, I would argue if you have at least two to three years of professional experience, you absolutely can apply. And whatever industry that that comes in, you know, by all means, you know, as long as again, you're able to show that there is leadership potential. And again, if you've got, you know, academic success that has translated into what you're doing professionally, and now you know that the MBA is kind of a, a great next step for you, absolutely, by all means, go ahead and apply. Um, so I, I would say anything. Now, I also should, should also mention that if you're planning on applying to start in the fall of 2023, you've got an additional year of experience that you're going to gain before the program starts. So if you have two years as of today, you'll have three years by the time the program starts. So keep that in mind as well. Awesome. Okay, I think we're like closing in on time. So I'm just going to call on Apiers first. I just want to say thank you big time. We're going to be in your DM to kind of promote the diversity recruitment for Babsi and also for Lane also. <laughs> so I'm going to be in your DM. But, you know, in few words, what would be your closing words to the people on this call today? Happy can't on this call, even we are students, because you're an alum. We are like still in school rookie. Some of us, some of us are alums on this call. So but just what will be your closing word on this call to us? Yeah, I just would like to say, uh, feel free to reach out um, to me. Feel free to reach out to other alumni uh, from Babson. 
and most of you will be considering uh, other colleges as well. Uh, the play game is the same. Uh, feel free to reach out to wherever you uh, plan to apply. Uh, but when it comes to a Babson, please feel free. Now you know Terence, <laughs> you know, um, don't be a stranger to him. You can be in conversation as you're going around your application. Now you know me. I'll refer you to also other colleagues of mine that I know that are still in school right now that are working with other senders and they'll be able uh, to help you. Uh, in this journey, you will feel fear, that's okay. Uh, you will feel anxiety and that's okay, but that should not stop you from actually applying. You still need to go ahead and submit your applications and you still need to give it your best effort with each and every application that you send. Awesome, that was robust. Thank you so much for sharing your time and you know, giving us this opportunity to connect with you after and our members. Mm -hmm. Please, if you want to send RP the connections, RP has the connections after this call, make sure you send an introductory message and say, hi, RP has, I was on the call with you and Terrence. Introduce yourself, the hell, so he will not accept you. Mm -hmm. Cultures like Terrence said, be professional. So Terrence, over to you, what will be your closing words before you get on the plane, you know, to get the cruise live in Africa, so we'll be a closing one. <laughs> Um, my DMs are open to so go ahead and, and feel free. Um, no matter again, you know, what your goal is, um, just kind of enjoy the journey and appreciate it as you're going along. Um, this, the MBA journey from the time you apply up until the, the time you graduate is probably going to be one of the most kind of life-changing journeys that you'll ever embark on. And the network that you build and the number of people that you meet along the way, I think are, are just going to be a tremendous value add to you per, per, personally, as well as professionally. And so, you know, and that may, again, be people that you meet at institutions that you don't end up going to. Of course, it may include those who, who you do. And so, you know, to Apier's point, reach out to as many people as possible, ask questions, um, engage, you know, get to know folks along the way. No question is, is a dumb question. Ask as many questions as you can. Make sure that it, it overall is a good fit for you. Because again, you kind of only get one chance to do the MBA. And so, you know, you want to make sure that you do it right, but also make sure that you enjoy the process along the way. Absolutely. Thank you. I just wanted to say a very big congratulations to Terrence. He was actually promoted, you know, earlier this month to so the senior director. So a big congratulations and flowers to him on the chat box. So congratulations to you again, Terrence, for and Happy to know how you do for the Babson College program. So for those asking how the rich Terrence, I believe you saw the slides, the Instagram, the Facebook, the LinkedIn page, and you saw the email address to connect to the admissions team. Go to the website, send an email to the admissions team, introduce yourself, you were in lane. Remember, applications is going to open up next week, Tuesday, I believe, August 30th. Um, before you submit, if you're on this call, be sure to send an email to see how I was on this call. I'm requesting for the waiver in that aspect. We have the uh, attendance list to checklist that also. So if you haven't filled it, filled it in that aspect. Um, so with that, on behalf of uh, the City of Lane, uh, managing partners and volunteers and team will be awesome work reaching out to you. We want to say very big thank you to you, Therence, to you, Hapiers, and to the Babson College MBA program for honoring our call to come to our community. We do hope to continue these partnerships in years to come and increase the diversity recruitment at Babson College. And it's a more, you know, exciting conversation and partnerships in that aspect. So I just want to say a very big thank you for the bottom of my heart. And again, a big welcome to Africa in the next few days. So, so Sabuana, like they say in South Africa, <laughs> on your trip, you get to know that. All right, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. I cannot wait to, to you know, step foot on the continent. That's mm -hmm. just perfect. You know, I'm, I'm planning on you know, incorporating more and, and doing it on a professional level as well. Yeah, and maybe sometime you get to come to West Africa and we're going to host you pretty big in Nigeria and to Zimbabwe, yeah. <laughs> I'm a Zimbabwe colleague in my, in, in my, in my program, so it's so awesome, yeah. Yes, no, that's what we've been talking about. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much for being on this call. Um, Officially, we're ending the um the webinar, Um, we're going to stay on the call for 30 minutes to support our committee members who are going to be migrating to, you know, the Discord channel. And if Apia still want to spend time, you know, some persons may be scared of asking some questions with Terrence, you know, on the call. If Apia want to spend five minutes and, you know, just be free with 
the students and ask our questions you're happy to stay on the call in the next 10 minutes if you want to but if you don't so uh we officially don't record in the meeting <laughs> thank you so much all right you're kicking me out now so I'll head no we're not kicking you out you know, you know that someone's like oh my god i don't want parents to know i'm asking this question how curious can you tell me like yeah <laughs> just give them that five ten minutes to do that right so that is just the reason why <laughs> So thank you again. I look forward to continuing this partnership. I'm Absolutely. So excited. We do the same. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Have a great day, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye. God bless. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Piers, do you want to spend five to ten minutes with our members?